Hi, welcome to Free. I'm Geraldine, and today is a great day for learning English. Today's motivational video is about a friend. Who can live without a friend? And we have many friends, but one of them is our best friend. Your best friend is your dictionary. Your dictionary is going to be your best friend if it's not already. A dictionary is just like a friend. They say friends are family you choose. So you, you get to choose your dictionary. Sometimes your friend just becomes your friend because it's around you all the time. That happens. So maybe dictionary is there, but you just didn't get to know it. So you need to know your dictionary. There are, well, nowadays we have dictionaries online, which are very, very helpful. But in the past, believe it or not, we had physical dictionaries, like big, heavy books that had a lot of information. But maybe you're old fashioned. Well, a dictionary, a physical dictionary is also very useful. I use all kinds of dictionaries. So your dictionary is like your friend. Sometimes your friends tell you things that you don't get. That happens with a dictionary a lot. It's like it's trying, we know it's trying to say something, but we just don't get it. But there are ways to understand it. It's with dictionaries, because dictionaries have an introduction. Believe it or not, at the beginning, there are instructions. You have abbreviations. You have phonetic symbols if they use any. They give you examples of how to use the dictionary. Each dictionary is unique, so you need to understand each dictionary. If you already have one, well, get that one and understand it better, and it will help you a lot more. Uh, if you don't have one, you can just buy one, or you can use one online for free. You can download an app. There are apps of dictionaries too. Today, we're going to learn how to use uh, the online dictionary uh, from Word Reference, which is the page that Michael Kellogg, the owner, has allowed us to use. There are tons of dictionaries. There are many dictionaries, many kinds of dictionaries. Now, the one that will help you the most is the one that is according to your level of English too. If you're just starting, there will be beginner's dictionaries, probably bilingual dictionaries. And if you are at least intermediate, I advise you to use monolingual dictionaries. You won't get everything at first, but little by little you will continue learning uh, because you will be in contact with more English and you can challenge yourself. And when you're looking for the definition of a word, you will find another word that you don't understand and you have to look for that definition. You can spend hours and hours in the dictionary. Isn't that fun? There are also picture dictionaries. They are very useful if you are a very visual learner. They help you a lot. You can have pictures with just the pictures and the words in English, the pictures, the word and the translation, picture with pronunciation, very important, and many, many more. So let's learn how to use uh, the online dictionary. You can go to any online dictionary you wish, but remember that each of them has different instructions, different symbols, different abbreviations. If you invest some time in learning how to use it, you will find a lot more use to it. Any dictionary is good. You can choose the one you like the best. It can be the way they explain. Some have, there are learner dictionaries uh, with easier words for definitions in English. If it's monolingual, maybe you just want English, Spanish, or well, the one that you like the best. But make sure that the one you use, you stick to that so you can get the most out of that dictionary. Today, we're using Word Reference. Word Reference is not just a dictionary, but a whole website with uh, forums. It's very good for languages in general. So let, let's go there. So here we are. This is the page we are using, Word Reference. It has English dictionaries, uh, forums. It's a great page. So here we have different dictionaries. If we go to this page, we won't find the instructions, let's say. But here you have all of the dictionaries they have. For example, here, English monolingual. That means that it's only English and English. You have an English definition dictionary, English synonyms, English usage, English collocations, English conjugations. 
and then you have also English and other languages. So let's go to the English definition. Yeah, we can look for a word, for example, dictionary. We look for the word, and here we have it. We have, we are in the English definition dictionary. Here we have the word we have looked for, and here we can hear the pronunciation of the word if we want to, and we can even hear different accents. Then we have the same pronunciation, but given in symbols. After this, this dictionary shows us other options. We can find this word also in other dictionaries, in Spanish, in French, in, the, in all the other dictionaries they have. Then we go to the entry, per se. <laughs> here we have the word dictionary, and here it's divided by syllables. Dictionary. And again, we have the pronunciation. Here it says this is the American pronunciation. These are phonetic symbols. Some of the symbols look like letters and some look like strange letters. Then we have this abbreviations and uh, PL and IES. Well, this is one thing and this is another. They are separated by commas. We see a dot after the end. So it, we need to know what these mean and what this means. So here we have the abbreviations and the pronunciation of symbols. If we go to the abbreviations, we click on this, here we will have the English dictionary abbreviations. These are not the abbreviations of the, language, the English language. These are the abbreviations of the dictionary, how they explain the words. For example, we have the abbreviation of abbreviation. But we're going to look for the two abbreviations that we found. One is the N. You see that all the abbreviations have a dot or a period. I don't know. We have the N. And it means noun. So when we go to our word dictionary, we have an N. That means that it is a noun. And then we have P-L-I-S. We go and look for the PL, that means plural. So the plural of dictionary is dictionaries. This is in the last syllable. Dictionary, instead of a Y, we spell IES, dictionaries. And it also here tells us the kind of noun it is, a countable noun. And it, have, it has also a, a length for us to, to know what this means. And then we have the definition. Well, the pronunciation. For the pronunciation, we can also here click on pronunciation symbols. Okay, so here we have the pronunciation and the consonants are easier because most just have one sound, but others do not. So for example, when you see the G uh, in, the, in the pronunciation symbols, it's not a G, it's a symbol that sounds as in this word, get, like in get, for example, this. This is a symbol uh, when you have the combination of words CH, ch, for example. But there are few only uh, consonants that are different. In the vowels, we do have a lot more symbols because in English, there are a lot more sounds, for example, Let's look at, uh, at our entry. We have our entry here and we have the symbols here. This is the pronunciation. And here we also have the pronunciation, which is pretty much the same. Let's, let's look at this. If we see here, let's make it bigger. So here we have the pronunciation and how do we read this? We can click here on the pronunciation symbols or directly here we can click and it shows us the pronunciation symbols for the sounds of English. First we have the stress. So we have primary stress and secondary stress. Primary stress, well you will see it in two syllable words. In, in words that have more syllables you will probably see primary and secondary stress. Then here we have the vowels, 
the symbols that you will see in the pronunciation and the examples of how you pronounce. For example, here we have the symbol and it's used for the words eat, see, meet. The symbol for the words it, big, finishes. In our dictionary, we have the symbol. So it's not dictionary, but dictionary. 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 And here you have all the symbols and the examples. Um, most symbols are used for vowels because you know there are only five vowels, but a lot more vowel sounds. So that's why we need the, the, the symbols. In the consonants, it's easier because most consonants just look like the, the letter they represent. But starting here, we have different symbols. For example, in our word, we have this symbol. This symbol that we might not know how to pronounce. So we have to look for it here. And it's using she, station, push. So it's a sh. So it's dictionary dictionary but of course you will know that when you study a little bit more about phonetic symbols uh, for that you need just a couple of lessons on phonetic symbols they might look overwhelming at first but you get the hang of it so just like this one you can use any other dictionary but you have to do a little digging sometimes it's not so easy to find uh, this information in some other dictionaries, it is easier. If you have any doubts, if you need any help, I can help you. I'm here to help you. Oh, and one more thing. Some people say that you shouldn't like rely so much on dictionaries. And of course, you have a friend. You rely on your friend when you can. But just say, for example, if you have to take an exam, you won't take your friend with you. It's just like that. The dictionary won't be with you there. But after the exam, you can go and check with him or her. <laughs> um, I hope you make a new friend, a new best friend, and that it is your dictionary. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, share, and see you soon.